In AWS, before you start creating your applications or websites, or even before launching your servers, databases, storage, you need to select a region. So it is very important for you to understand what is a region, what are availability zones, and in this video, I will teach you exactly that. In this video, we will look at AWS global infrastructure, understanding what are regions, how to use them, what are availability zones, what are edge locations and more. AWS also has their own documentation explaining the global infrastructure, which showcases how many regions they have, how many availability zones they have. So you have a map here displaying all the regions all over the world. So you have Mumbai region in India, Hyderabad region as well, and you have all the different regions here in US. Along with this, AWS has new regions coming up. So one in Saudi Arabia, here in Auckland, Taiwan, Thailand, and so on. So this is the AWS infrastructure, and this is what we are going to be learning in this video here. One thing to note before you start learning AWS is, AWS services are either regional or global. What do I mean by this? So here is my AWS account, and I am inside EC2 instance dashboard. Right now, I am in Ohio region, and you can see no instances found. But if I change my region to, let's say, US East, North Virginia, you can see now I have an instance running in North Virginia, which means EC2 is a regional service. So if I create an EC2 instance in North Virginia, it will only be available in North Virginia instead of any other regions. So if I change the region from something else, let's say Mumbai region now, I will not be able to see the same instance because the instance was in North Virginia region not in Mumbai region. This means in AWS, some services are regional and if you don't see them, which means you are not in the right region. Although there are also other services which are global, such as AWS IAM and S3. We will be learning about AWS IAM in the next video. So what is a region? AWS has regions all over the world. So you can see all the different names of the region here. So we have US East North Virginia, US East Ohio, US West California, Oregon, same way in Europe, you have Frankfurt, Ireland, London, Paris. But along with this, regions are also named as US East 1, US East 2, US West 1, US West 2. You need to know these names because you will be using these names in your CLI or your Terraform or maybe in your programming languages. So you will be referring North Virginia as US East 1. To show you an example, this is my terminal. And if I want to use AWS CLI, I will be running a command AWS configure. We are going to be learning AWS CLI as well. So if I want to connect my AWS with my terminal on US East 1, which is North Virginia, I have to define it this way. So regions can also be called as US East 1, which is the code for North Virginia. Regions consist of data centers. So here is an image of a data center inside Oregon region. And regions are cluster of data centers, as you can see here. It consists of availability zone. So inside the region, there will be multiple availability zone. North Virginia has six different availability zone. So we understood there are so many different regions to deploy our application. So the main question is how to choose the right AWS region for your applications or websites. This question can also be asked in your AWS interviews. So you need to understand how do you choose the right AWS region for deploying your applications or websites. So these are different points to keep in mind when choosing the right region. The first is data stays in your region. For example, in the war between Russia and Ukraine, Russia had a compliance requirement that data should not move out of their country. So if that is the case, you will have to choose a particular region. Next is closer to your customer. You will be deploying your applications or websites closer to your customer. For example, I have a website and all my customers are in US region. Although I stay in India, I will be hosting my application closer to my customers so that they can fetch the information very quickly. So I will be choosing a region closer to my customer. This is another criteria to choose a region. Next criteria is service availability. Not all services or features are available everywhere. Whenever AWS launches new services, they will be putting them first in the North Virginia or the US regions instead of putting them all over the world. So you will have to check if the service you want to use is present in that region or not. And this is one of the criteria. The next criteria is the cost difference. Pricing for every service is different for every region. Usually you will see less pricing for US regions compared to Europe. And to show you an example, let me take you to the EC2 pricing page. So I am here on EC2 pricing page and the region is selected to US East North Virginia. 
you can see the price for T4G Nano instance is 0.0042 in North Virginia. But if I change this to something else, maybe in Cape Town, you can see the difference. The same instance is now for 0.0054, which is expensive compared to the North Virginia region. So if you're a company looking for saving cost, you might be choosing US regions compared to any other regions because pricing in US regions are less. So these are four factors to choose the region. The first is compliance requirement. Second is proximity to your customers. You will be deploying your application closer to your customers so they can fetch faster, having less latency. Next is service availability. You will be choosing a region where your services are available. And lastly, pricing or the cost difference. So you will be choosing region which is going to cost you less compared to any other region. Now that we understand this, let's go and look at availability zones. So what are availability zones? AZ is a separate data center with its own power and network, and they are present inside a region. So each region has multiple availability zone, usually three, minimum two, and maximum of six. So North Virginia region has six different AZs. And inside a re region, you will have different AZs. Let's say, for example, in this North California region, which is US West 1, you have three different AZs. So US West 1A, 1B, and 1C. This is how naming is done for AZs. Now, these AZs are separated from each other for disaster protection. AZs are isolated to avoid all being affected by a disaster, but they are still connected to each other with AWS own networking, which is which are very high speed and low latency networks. So that if you want to transfer data from one AZ to another, you can do it very quickly using AWS internal network. We select AZ when deploying our instances or databases by choosing a subnet. So we select a subnet and one subnet equals to one AZ. Next is edge location. Edge locations are generally used for caching to store your data that is accessed frequently so that the customer don't have to fetch it right from the origin. And we use this along with S3 or CDN, which is the cloud friend service in AWS. So edge locations are used by AWS to deliver content to the users very fast. And the purpose of edge location is to cache copies of your content closer to the user, which will reduce latency and improve speed these are generally used for content delivery and streaming. So why to use edge location? Edge location are part of AWS CDN, which is the cloud front service. Using edge location means you get faster loader times for your website, which will be resulting in better user experience and lower latency. So moving on, you don't have to understand edge locations unless you are learning about cloud front, but you need to understand what is a region and availability zone because we will be using them in every service. So this was our video understanding AWS global infrastructure, what are regions, what are availability zone. And in the next video, we will look at AWS IEM service.